Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. This is Rusty and Heather Bryant. Summer shorts. We are still answering your questions. We have maybe three or four more weeks of this, I guess. I don't really know. I lose track of... I highlighted like six questions. Yeah, but we're trying to figure out a, a an effective way to continue answering questions even after our summer shorts are over. Well, we could go into August with this because a mm-hmm. lot of people still have summer in August. You're the only one that doesn't have <laughs> summer <laughs> past the I, middle of July. I go back to school a week when people are listening to this, if they listen to it the day it comes out. I will be in school one week from this day. Ooh. That hurts. Yeah, it does. Yeah. um, I was, yeah, the the summer is so weird, which I'm really glad we're answering these questions and they're not, uh, they're not questions that are real. Um, They're, I've said it before, they're evergreen, um, where you can go back and listen to these at any time because they're not specific Mm -hmm. to anything that's going on. Really, the only ones we've done like that are the Christmas movies. Yeah, I guess. That was fun. Yeah. I mean, you, you can go back and again. listen to all of all of these at any time. But mm-hmm. summer is crazy for podcasting because mm-hmm. people, they're not in a regular rhythm. A lot of people are not in regular rhythms. So you just never know. Some weeks, I told you, though, the one with our boys was going to mm-hmm. be the most downloaded ever. And it was. Uh, but we still, I still have people. I had somebody text me yesterday and message me today mm-hmm. about that podcast. Yep. So uh, go back and listen if you haven't already. Were you spitting over there? What were you? What were you doing? No, I've been, I'm drinking coffee for those of you who are not. <laughs> those people can see you. I'm, it's fine. <laughs> I, I'm I'm slurping quietly. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're doing this out of a little, little bit out of rhythm for us, uh, because Heather's leaving tomorrow. Yeah, I am. Just for a few days. For a few days. And then we usually, that's usually when we, that's what you were doing. I was clearing my throat. You were clearing your throat. It looked like you were leaning back there going, I'm going to spit something (laughs) out. Yeah, you know me. (laughs) Yeah. Um, okay. So summer shorts, this one might actually be short. I'm Uh not making any promises. That's right. (laughs) Because we're really, really okay, bad at that. So, um, I, you put me in charge of coming up with some um, choosing, not Choose. coming up with, but choosing these questions mm-hmm. um, to narrow it down for you. Because we have a lot of them. And as you said, this is your busy time. And so, I went through and I starred in our thing, email list, about six of them that I thought were really good. And I kind of gave you the high points for those. So, um Anyway, you happen to choose one that is from right here. Oh, wait. No, that's not what I was going to say. I'm going to say that in a minute. What I was going to say is, as I was reading through them today, somebody actually wrote, here is my summer short, and then put doot, 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 doot <laughs> in the parentheses. Well, you better sing it. I was like, sing yeah. the jingle. Summer short, doot, 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 summer short. <laughs> it's just not near as fun as your hello, folks, that you do. It's fine. Don't people don't people don't really react to that. Maybe they're just so used to it. Maybe I need to come up with a new one. And it's not mine. It wasn't new. Mm-mm. It's a it's a shout out to my favorite comedian. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, we've kind of gone with a shout out to our favorite pastor. And there you go. <laughs> We're just a bunch of copycats. Yeah, we are. We're not very original. Hey, every good idea is stolen. <laughs> it's what I've always been told. Okay, so what I was going to say is that today's question actually comes from right here in Clinton. Clinton. Clinton, Which, Mississippi. If somebody, I'm just going to go ahead and say, on our live drawing, if we draw somebody from Clinton, Mississippi, that's just going to be a freebie, and we'll draw again. Yeah. Because that's silly. Yep. Yeah. But we could still go to um, dinner with these people, because mm-hmm. it's from right here. I read it, and I was like, hey, right yep. here in Clinton. Right here. Okay, so it's kind of, not a long question, but it has some important things in it that I don't want to leave out. So I'm okay. just going to read the whole question. So, okay. So you're making this not a summer short. No, it's not that long. Just stay with me. Okay. All right. You ready? Here's the question. The title is sleeping in separate bedrooms with lots of question marks. This has been on our minds for a while. We have been sleeping in said separate bedrooms for a while now, as I have restless legs, the writer of this. 
and I have a hard time going to sleep with this. I also try my best to start out in our bedroom, but most of the time I just get restless and cannot seem to go to sleep, and this aggravates me like crazy. I sometimes lay there for an hour or more. I want us both to get our best sleep, so I just tend to go sleep in the other bedroom. I want to stay by my wife all night. I don't want this to become a habit, but it has evolved into one. Will this lead to problems down the road? It does not mean I don't love her. I just want us both to sleep well. I trust she is not talking to anyone after I leave, nor am I doing that either. We both understand that. What can we do? Is this healthy or not? I know older couples have been doing this for years and seem to be happily married. Where do we go from here? Hmm. So I know that's not our typical pain and triggers and how do we get through this type of question. Sorry for my video people. I had a hair stuck to my <laughs> lipstick. But <laughs> you're, just, you're just picking hair and spitting. I had a, I had a, um, a hair stuck at my lip gloss. So mm. It was bothering me. Mm. But I do think that it's important because I happen to know that my parents tend to sleep in different bedrooms a lot. Like they will try to go to sleep in the same room. You know, my dad will get coffin or hot or whatever, or my mom gets hot. So my dad goes into the other room. Mm -hmm. And so I know that there's not, I mean, I don't think that this is an unusual question. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, there may be people out there that, that are thinking that doesn't really apply to me, um, which it doesn't like, it doesn't apply to us. We never sleep in mm -mm. different bedrooms, but I think what I like about this question is that this, um, this listener is, thinking about things that could become problems, yeah. like small things. And so I think that there's people that are out there listening that maybe this is not an issue, but you can think of things that might seem a little bit trivial, but maybe you've thought, I wonder if that's something that's going to come back to haunt us mm -hmm. at some point. And mm -hmm. so maybe you can apply some of what we're going to talk about to a situation that's maybe different, but, um, you know, something that just, it may seem like a small thing, but you're afraid it could grow into yeah. something that's I more think, of a problem. Yeah. I think the biggest concern here for this listener is that he doesn't want to cause anything to be a wedge between he and his wife. And, like you said, that could be sleeping in separate beds or it could be something else that people um, deal with that. I mean, like I just think about this is so dumb, but I think about people who maybe have different diets, like as far as what they eat for dinner. And all of a sudden the man's eating one thing and the woman's eating something else at different times, prepared different and and they miss out on family dinners mm -hmm. together. I mean, like that's a silly example, but I think they're little things that are important to marriages and spending time together that if you just go, Oh, that's not a big deal. And then you have several of those, it's not a big deals. And all of a sudden it becomes a problem. Well, I was just trying to think of some other things. And one would be even uh, like a lot of people ask about going to bed at different times. Mm -hmm. That could be something that's that, you know, is similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even this is very different, but it's still one of those trivial things like wearing your wedding ring. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's just yeah. things like that. That What about watching different TV shows? Yep. Like I'm going in my room to watch this. You stay right. in the den to watch this because we don't like the same type shows. Yep. Yep. So just think through things like that as we're talking about this. And but let's answer this this person's direct question. Um, do you want to start? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Well, I think that I think that one of the smart things to do would be to point out the dangers first, mm -hmm. uh, which he already actually pointed out mm -hmm. some of the dangers, and and then you know maybe the pointing out the dangers, but then also pointing out, well, what are the things that you can, you could maybe give and take a little bit? Um, and then, you know, ultimately does that, does the ultimate answer become you should stay in the same bed or it's okay to go. Mm -hmm. to? So, so I think the dangers, there are some dangers. So maybe we could just split spitball some of the dangers. He mentioned, you know, I don't, there's no fear of, 
her talking to somebody else or him talking to somebody else. And I do think that that's not, not necessarily even just the talking to somebody else. I think that there could become this danger of, oh, well, you know, I'm restless and not sleeping, so I'm going to go in here to another bedroom, and, you know, then you just start playing on your phone, and and, and not that that, I mean, maybe it doesn't even lead to anything bad or looking at things that you shouldn't look at or talking to people. Maybe it's not even that, but it's just you're restless, so you go somewhere else, and because your wife's not there or your husband's not there, you just kind of start scrolling and, and wasting time, and then you don't sleep. You get no sleep, and your whole problem was you left the bedroom because you were being because you were restless, and so then that just kind of snowballs into the next morning. You're like grumpy, and you're you're not getting rest. So there are those dangers where I think it becomes I'm going to leave this bedroom, but I'm going to go somewhere else and watch so TV, watch TV, mm-hmm. or read, or you know play on my phone or whatever, and that's where. I think there could be a, a slippery slope of, mm-hmm. of danger. And I do think there's a certain accountability being in bed For with sure. your spouse that, I mean, you're not going to look at something or, you know, even it's something innocent, like just wasting time. Right. That's what I um, like. It doesn't have to just lead to something else, mm-hmm. um, but just wasting time um, and not getting the rest that you left the room to try to get. Yep. Or you didn't want to disturb them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a danger. I also think that a danger is missing out on quality, intimate, and I don't even just mean sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, just intimate being um, that quality time of just being together. Mm -hmm. I think you miss out on that. Um, if you start off in separate beds. Yeah, and he mentioned that he tries to start mm-hmm. off in, in bed and then usually something, you know, he's restless or what for for whatever reason he ends up moving at some mm-hmm. point. Um, and there is, there, you know, there is a, this disconnect that can happen there. Um, I mean, a great example of this is we always, we try our best to go to bed together. Mm-hmm. And we usually read. We don't go to sleep at the same time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like I get. I'm exhausted during the summer, especially you during read summer. For like two pages. I do. I read. <laughs> we try to read at night before we go to sleep, and I will read like nothing, and I don't remember any of it. And that's why you're always like, "Hey, did you like that book you read?" I have no idea. I don't even know what I read. <laughs> it just made me go to sleep. Yeah, and so I try to read fiction before I go to sleep because that's just the easiest way for me to fall asleep. So anyway. Uh, but so I'll, I mean, I will always just say, hey, good night, love you, roll over, I am going to sleep. Um, but where the connection continues throughout the night is even last night, I woke up at some point and I was like, I didn't really heard, heard her breathing and stuff. <laughs> and so you just get to reach out mm-hmm. and feel you know, feel your your uh, breath and feel you breathing up and down and your body moving. And then I'm like, oh, okay, we're good. But <laughs> I mean, that that happened last night. I was like, okay, she's not dead, so we'll move on. <laughs> um, but I do think that that's that's just a connection. And if you're not in the same bed, that obviously doesn't doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, those are a few things that I thought of that could just mm-hmm. be dangers that to be aware of. The great thing is, is that he. He mentioned that, and Mm -hmm. he said, so the compromises, and we don't like the word compromise, but maybe the give and take a little bit is the, let's start off in the same bed together. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a, that's, whoa, 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 I thought of one more danger, and I meant to mention this. One danger is if you have children, that could be Mm -hmm. a little bit tough. Yeah. Um, Because if your children see you sleeping Mm -hmm. in different beds, then... There's some questions mm-hmm. probably that come up, right? And so you you would have to navigate that situation because mm-hmm. uh, I mean you may think oh well we wake up before our kids, but you also may have kids that walk into your bedroom during the night and they're like wait why are y'all sleeping in different mm-hmm. beds you know 
Um, and so, or on the couch, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you can obviously explain it and say, "Well, I was having trouble sleeping. I, you know, whatever. I was restless, and so I came and got into another room so we could sleep better." And and most kids are going to be fine with that. But you just need to be aware if it's something that's ongoing and it happens all the time, they may question, you know, why are sure. mommy and daddy not sleeping together? Um, and you're also, I, th- I think that everybody would say. In a perfect world, we would love to sleep together. Sure. I mean, in a perfect world, everybody would be like, oh, I wish that I never even got hot. I wish we could cuddle and sleep together. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just not reality. But you're also teaching your children, if you have children, you know. And if they just see mom and dad sleeping in different bedrooms the whole time they're growing up, then that may be what they think. Right. And And right. you probably are like, man, I hope my... My kids sleep mm-hmm. with their spouse mm-hmm. every night. So well, and I can I can remember back to when my parents first started saying that they, or or I noticed that they that dad would come out of the back bedroom, and it wasn't a lot when mm-hmm. I was young. Right. This has been like older, older, and um and even like my sister and her husband were building a house, and they had they had a few months left to build their house. And so their family stayed mm-hmm. with my parents and I can remember my dad go, Oh no, I've Where lost am I my, gonna sleep. <laughs> I've lost my extra. Somebody bedroom. stole my bedroom. Exactly. And so like, I mean, so there's been conversations and, and talks about that. And I can remember just thinking, and I was older and mature just thinking, oh, I wonder if that's really why they sleep in different yeah. beds. You mm-hmm. know, like it's just, are they just saying that or is there a problem? And it it genuinely right. is. But I yeah. had to process through mm-hmm. that even as a little bit older mm-hmm. that, yeah, because we don't have trouble sleeping in the same bed, mm-hmm. then then it was foreign to me yep. that somebody else would. Yep. And so I just kind of had to process through that. But. On the other side of this, I think that there is very valid reasons for getting up because if somebody was really restless and tossing and turning like he's saying he is because of his restless legs and things like that, I would be like, oh, my gosh, get out so Mm -hmm. I can sleep. Yeah, coughing. Yeah, Yeah, if you're sick or whatever. Like, I get it. Mm -hmm. Um, I get that that's a a problem. Yeah. and so I think that there's reality to this. Do you remember the I Love Lucy show? Yeah. And she and, um, what's his name? Danny? No. Dan- Re- uh, Ricky. 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 Yeah, Danny. Ricardo. Yeah. Um, they they slept in separate beds, twin beds, because of the, of the time. Yeah. yeah. Like you couldn't be in the same bed yeah. um, with somebody. And so I think about, but they were in the same room. Twin bed. Just hey, twin maybe beds. that's the answer. Get a couple of twin beds. <laughs> Put them in the same room. <laughs> hey, good night, babe. Right. <laughs> I'll wave at you on the other side. You know, they do make those mattresses that are split. Yeah. That one comes up and, you know, yeah. you can yeah. rearrange. Sorry. You could. But, but, that, but that's, some, that's, that's some of those things to think about. Just if you're, if it's one of those, oh, sorry. If it's one of those things that you or your spouse just feels a little uncomfortable mm-hmm. about there are ways. then let's try to figure out mm-hmm. something so maybe it's just the we're going to start in the same bed together we're going to make sure that if we're watching tv together that we're doing that in the in the same bed if we're reading to fall mm-hmm. asleep if you know and then of course the intimacy part of it and just being connected as you're going to sleep and maybe it's one of those things that it's not an every night thing, you know, where you're laying there in bed and then, oh, okay, well, it's time to go to bed. I'm going to my room right. now. You know, yeah. I don't, that, that, there might just be a part of that that just feels a little, oh, man, is yeah. this the way it was supposed to be? Right. But, so, like Heather was saying, maybe it's the mattress, you know, maybe you're, maybe you just try different things. Mm-hmm. Like, how can we fix this situation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any, have you thought of any other, like ways to give and take a little bit um well i mean my solution what i would say if it was just me telling what i would do i would definitely say try different things like the mattresses um I don't, i'm not sure twin beds is the no answer, no but, heavens no <laughs> but the, the it mattress, is kind of funny though yeah but the mattress i think is okay mm-hmm. and then also if it doesn't work i just think it's important to protect the time 
Yeah. That going to bed, whether you lay in bed together and watch TV, whether you read together, whether you, you know, read your little devotion together or, you know, talk about your day. Um, of course, the intimacy part of that, all of those things being regular and routine, going to sleep together. Mm-hmm. And then like this person is saying, if wife goes to sleep and he's like, oh my gosh, I can't, like, I feel like I'm driv- driving her crazy. Then at that point, you move and try to sleep Here, somewhere else. Here's where if a couple came to us and said, hey, every night my wife goes into the bedroom, into our bedroom, and she reads or she watches a television show that she likes, she falls asleep in there. I usually stay in the den Mm -hmm. and I watch TV because I like to watch something else or I'm reading and don't want to disturb her. And then when it's time for me to go to sleep, because we don't sleep well in the same bed together, I just sleep on the couch or go to, I would say that's dangerous. Absolutely. And so that's the extreme. Mm -hmm. And so then it's, okay, well, how can we get back to a little closer to where we're not uh, really putting ourselves in this danger, like mm-hmm. this, like yep. this question is. Now, all of that to say, also, I so much, every, so much of marriage is communication. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just talk about this. And so, what if you have a couple, and both of you are just like, we we don't care. Like, we just want to sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, one of us has to wake up early. We one of us is restless. One of us gets hot, and neither one of us care. And I think that this also happens during little bitties. Like, mm-hmm. I'll just sleep with the kids, so the kid will sleep, or I'm going to sleep in here so that I hear the baby better. And there's seasons that that is going to mm-hmm. change. But back to what you were saying. Sorry. Yeah. So are you saying that those are times that are okay, or are you just saying be careful? No, I'm just saying not, be careful. Yeah. Because, I I mean, like, I get, hey, I have to be up in the morning, and you get to stay home with the baby, and so, you you know, I don't need to be disturbed mm-hmm. as much. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's going to be some seasons yep. like that, yep. short seasons. And that's <laughs> where, you know, where I was going is just the communication. And if both of you are okay and you've talked about it because the the big danger there is where one of you says, I really want you in this bed mm-hmm. and it makes me uncomfortable and I feel disconnected when you're sleeping somewhere else. And then that's where you need to really work. On. I mean, even to the point of seeing your doctor about it, you know, if there's some sort of a sleep problem, because doctors can help with that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. You know, what is it that's causing you to not be able to sleep at night? You know, all of that. But... Going back to both of you are okay, you've communicated, Mm -hmm. then it becomes, all right, well, we don't want this to get to a place where it's causing, um, you know, a wedge, like you Mm -hmm. said at the beginning, a wedge between us. So what do we do for for us? Me and you, we're both okay with it, but we want to look for the red flags, and Mm -hmm. we want to be proactive, and so we want to make any decisions and changes and adjustments so that we're that we both recognize this could be something right. that would cause a problem. Because that the sleeping, if you do it like that, you're roommates. That's right. And you just don't want the rest of your marriage yes. to follow in those steps. Like I think about Luke, our oldest one, he's in a brand new house in Oregon State, and he has like six roommates. Well, they're all out in the den watching soccer and cooking together and doing all that and then they're roommates so they all go to their rooms yeah. and go to sleep and that's just the definition of their friendships is it's just roommates but you don't want your marriage to become mm. that yeah. so it just needs to be very being purposeful in the other areas if that's what you decide to yep. do so i think the bottom line of this is that the way that this question was worded I don't think either one of us would have a real problem mm-hmm. with how this couple is handling mm-hmm. it. The The most, I th- for me, the most encouraging thing is that they recognize that it could become an issue. And so they're trying to get out ahead of that by mm-hmm. addressing the things and also making some, doing some things that, that allow them to, it's the give and take. That's right. The, the making sure that they're staying connected in other ways, but yet, For their sanity and for sleep purposes, you know, sometimes it requires getting in another room. Yep. 
So yep. I hope um, that helped. And if sleeping in different beds isn't your issue, like it's not ours, there's other areas that you can apply this to as well. Just being purposeful in the time that you do have together. Yeah. All right. So I hope that helped. We're going to do uh, several more weeks of this before we do our grand prize, prize drawing. So uh, go to our website and make sure that you click on that ask um, link under our contact and you can just submit your question. That also puts you into the drawing for the grand prize, which is a double date with us in your hometown. And we will come and visit you and go on a date with you if we draw your name. And we're looking forward to that. So, um, hey, thanks for listening. And if you get a chance, we would love for you to rate and review our podcast on the platform that you listen to us on. That would be very helpful and more people will be able to listen and get exposed to the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. So thanks so much. We'll see you next week.